Welcome to my Switching Routing and Wireless Essentials course. This should be the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is the second of three courses. Module 4, Inner VLAN Routing. So we're going to be looking at VLAN uh, communication operations, the ability to have one VLAN communicate with devices on a separate VLAN, we're going to be looking at the process of doing this through legacy router on a stick and using a layer 3 switch. And then we're going to end with troubleshooting. So the router operations actually takes place three ways. Legacy, router on a stick, or layer 3 switching using SVIs. So legacy literally is going to be physical ports per VLAN. Let me grab my pin. So this is VLAN 1 number, this is the second VLAN. So you actually have two, my, my drawing was kind of bad, but I mean this interface is tied to this network here. This one is tied to this one. Sorry my mouse kind of went all over the place. With legacy, if you have two VLANs, you're using two ports. If you have three uh, VLANs, you're using three physical ports. Legacy is all about VLANs being mapped to separate physical ports. This is no longer implemented because, well, one, router ports are expensive, and in a switched network, we can actually provide better resources. And the more common way of doing this is called router on a stick. You have a trunk interface, and on that trunk interface, you can have virtual interfaces. So we do this using 802.1Q trunk. And how that works is, I don't like that we don't have a diagram, but we have a router, and we have a switch, and we have one connection between the router and the switch. Well, this cable is going to be configured as a trunk with virtual exit points at the router level. That way, devices should be able to come into the switch, processed on the router, and sent back down the trunk, and then forwarded out the appropriate VLAN. We can also do this via a layer 3 switch. Here we have SVIs, switch virtual interfaces, that will allow for data to go from one VLAN to another. Now keep in mind, VLANs are separate networks. So to go from one VLAN to another, that's going to be using routing function or a routed port. So layer three switches, you can turn the ports into routed ports. So there are some advantages for using layer three switches. This is the newer way of doing it. However, layer 3 switches are really expensive. They are faster, and we are limited uh, to certain things, such as, well, brand of the equipment is going to be one of them. Meaning, if you uh, get like a Netgear switch, that may not be able to be configured as a layer 3 switch, where main name brand switches that actually classify as layer 3 devices should be working just fine. Some other pros are we're not limited to uh, one link because we have ether channel, um, latency issues are removed, and realistically, uh, if we're talking large WANs or large LAN, we already probably have layer three switches spread throughout the infrastructure, and that's going to be a far better use than a layer three router. Uh, again, layer three switches are more expensive but in this environment, a switching environment, they can be faster. So legacy we don't talk a whole lot on because realistically it's not supported anymore. So here we have a router on a stick. Again, this is our trunk right here. If we have multiple switches, we have to have trunks between the switches. And these switches will be configured, this will be configured a trunk port, this will be a trunk port, this will be a trunk port, and on the router side we'll have it configured as a receiving trunk port. 
And we do that by doing subinterfaces. So we have a parent interface, and then we'll do dot 10 or dot 20. These are normally tied to whatever VLAN number they are. They don't have to be, but that's pretty common. Like, I'm actually surprised this is not dot uh, 99. Because you'll notice dot 10, dot 20. That's because those are VLANs 10 and 20. You have to treat the parent interface like it has to be turned on. You don't wor need to worry about giving it an address because all of the, the sub-interfaces will be given the addresses. These allow exit points. So how do we do this? How do we set up VLANing? Well first, on the switch, we create and name the VLANs. We uh, create the management interface if we're not using VLAN 1. We have to configure access ports and trunking ports. I always suggest hard coding these. I don't like using the negotiated port types. That's just me. But I mean, there's pros and cons for using them, which I've discussed in other videos. How do we actually configure that? Here's an example. From the global configuration, type VLAN 10, that creates the interface. That creates the VLAN. We can name it. And then we actually can navigate to those interfaces by typing interface VLAN and the appropriate number. That will create our SVIs. From there, we need to actually put in which ports are tied to which VLAN. So here is a perfect example. This is going to be turning interface 18 into a VLAN port able to access VLAN 20. First thing we do is we set the switch port mode to access. From there, we say which switch port, uh, which VLAN it can access. We do that via switch port access, VLAN 20. We uh, turn it on, and that's it. That's how we can configure our access ports. If we want to configure our trunking ports, trunks are a lot easier. Switch port navigate to the interface, switch port mode trunk, turn it on. That's it. However, on the switch side, trunking is pretty simple. On the router side, it's a little bit more steps. So how do we set up our sub interfaces? Well, you navigate to whatever physical interface that trunk is plugged into. From there, we will create sub interfaces. We do that by typing interface, whatever the interface is, dot, whatever the VLAN is. From there, we'll have to set the appropriate encapsulation. We do encapsulation using dot one Q space, whatever the VLAN number is. That way, that lets us know this is the exit point for that specific VLAN. Then you can give it its IP address and turn it on and we are good to go. That provides our virtual gateways. Here's an example. We set a interface. Here we're looking at the parent interface, gig001. The sub interface will be the dot 10. That means we're probably gonna be using that for VLAN 10. We could do description if we want, but we don't have to encapsulate dot one q we have to say what vlan we're attached to it's vlan 10 we give it the ip address and we turn it on if the parent interface is turned off turning on the child's interfaces will not work we have to make sure that our parent interface is turned on and you'll notice here we have dot 20 here we have dot 99 Notice that again, dot 99 because the inner or the VLAN is 99. So we try to keep the interfaces the same as our VLAN numbers, though they don't have to be. And here is the parent interface, gig001. They just turn it on and they list a description. A common thing that I notice learners here is they create the sub interfaces, they create the encapsulate and they assign an IP addresses, they turn on the children interface, but they forget to turn on the parent interface. So make sure parent interface is turned on. 
from there we can now try pinging between one VLAN and another. Because we're using router on a stick, the router should accept and actually include in their routing table directly connected networks. And those router on a stick, the separate VLANs, are directly connected networks. So how can we verify? We could be looking at show IP route that shows a routing table, show IP interface brief that can ensure all of our interfaces are up and functioning, show interface trunk, though sometimes that's not the easiest one to show on a router because they're not technically being set as a trunk, that'd be showing on a switch. Nice thing is we have a packet tracer where we're going to be creating the VLANs, configuring the sub-interfaces, and then testing using those show commands. We again will do another one, building the network, setting up the switches and trunks, and then configuring the appropriate protocols. Questions, concerns, please reach out. Thank you.